everyone, this is Sandra at Spirit of Avalon. So, again, apologies for my nails. They will get sorted out eventually. <laughs> um, I just wanted to see if I could do this video today as well, which is going to be the items that I purchased when I was at Riches over at Long Man Tarot. Um, it's quite funny because... Richie said to me, oh, you won't need that much money. There's not that many shops and things that you would probably want to buy things in. No, OK. <laughs> we'll see. It just shows you never know, do you? But of course, um, I did have birthday money um, with me as well. So, But the first things, um, Richie went to... Glastonbury and I asked him if he could pick up a couple of items for me that they very often have out of stock. One is the magical spray the forest witch which I've wanted for ages. They also do an incense forest witch but I've not been able to get that as yet because as soon as it comes in it's like out of stock almost immediately but I will get it at some point. So this is the Forest Witch Magical Spray, which smells amazing, of course. I don't think I've smelled anything of theirs where I've thought, oh, I don't like the smell. So there was that. Um, and also the Forest Witch Charged Ritual Candle, which I don't want to take out of this at the moment because I'm going to use it in some um, particular um spell work and stuff so I don't want to really take it out of this but these are beeswax but they're a big you can see it's a huge candle and these are charged and it says on it dressed with a magical blend of herbs and oils chosen to enhance the intent of the candle charged in the appropriate phase of grandmother moon within a crystal grid so approximate 35 hours burn time so this candle was like 20 pounds but it is a big candle and it's got a long burn time on it so it's it's fine and i think the spray yeah the spray was 650 which is not too bad so those items i asked richie to pick up for me and obviously i I paid him for those once I saw him and then once I was at <laughs> at Richards we went into um, his local town like literally walking from where he lives into the town and they had a shop that had lots of pens in it I could have bought more in there but I didn't because I thought no because I'm going to other places better be careful and actually this I saw this the first day but I actually went back to get it on the day before last um but I'm showing it first because a lot of you probably won't be that interested it's the Lamy pen so this is a fountain pen I've got one already well I've got two actually one that Simon over at the Hermit's Cave um, gave to me which is the Lamy Joy which is really cool and I've got a pink Lamy pen, but it when it came, it's fine, but it didn't look like the colour on the screen when it came. So it was slightly disappointing. And then I saw this one. And again, this on screen is not the colour. On screen, this looks blue, but it's actually like a teal, like a greeny blue. It's really lovely. Um, and it's not showing like that on camera. It's just showing blue on camera so this is not the correct color of this because it's more of a greeny blue than it's showing on here it's like a teal um color and then it's like black see-through kind of black here some of them had different colors of this part of the pen um but yeah it was it was nice so it's metallic um, 
and I didn't have a metallic one and I wanted one with a different size nib on it. So I got the pen and then I picked up two boxes of cartridges, one in like a bluey colour and one in a greenish colour because the only ones I've got at the moment are the blue black inks and I thought these would go quite well with this pen. I don't want to get actual inks because I'll make too much of a mess with it so I'm fine with cartridges. So that was a fountain pen purchase in this shop. I think it's called Everything Analog. Um, so that was really good. So that was that was first off. Then where did we go? Because we went to the Long Man of Wilmington, which is is a is a walk up to like a chalk hill figure, although he's been he's not actually chalk anymore they've like um put stones in or paved him around so he stands out more and he's better obviously against the weather um so we went there and we also went to beachy head that was that felt really weird there because that's a lot where where people have um jumped over the cliff basically a lot of people have and it does feel weird there. It like draws you to the edge. So we went there. And then um, Richie and I went into Hastings. It was. Hastings was very cool. Very old buildings. And like the pub that we went in looked like it was about to fall down and had pirate flags outside. It was very cool. Anyway, we went into this little kind of um, witchy shop. They did all sorts in there. There was like crystals and we went down a couple of steps and there was some other things, you know, really cool. But they had a few decks and I thought, yes, when I saw this, because it was one that I'd been looking for. And that is the Celtic Tree Oracle. Um, I've got some tree decks, but I didn't have this one. Um, I also want to get, I also wanted to get the, um, it used to be called the Green Man Oracle, but it's now called the Spirit of Nature Oracle. The only thing is when I saw the cards on the new Spirit of Nature, they're a lot darker than the old cards on the Green Man Oracle. So I'm going to see if there, if I can get an older copy at, at some time. But anyway, I did get the Celtic Tree Oracle. This is what they look like on the back. It's just 25 cards. It's not a big set because um, obviously it's the Owen and there's only so many trees in the Owen. This one I did open because um, Richie wanted to have a look at the cards to see if it was something that he might like. And when I had this set before, years and years ago, and of course let it go, and now I've repurchased it. But when I had it, the cards were glossy. These are not, they're matte cards. So they're really nice, actually. I think they're nicer in matte than they were in the glossy card stock. So, yeah, so I'm really pleased to have picked, picked that up. I probably won't do a walkthrough of that because it's an older deck and everybody's seen it, you know, before. But there was there was that in that shop. Then we went um, into this bookshop. It's called Hare and Hawthorn, and it's one of those really old like traditional bookshops I love it you go in and the smell of like books and like old books and just that old bookshop smell I love it with an older man behind behind the um uh, counter and stuff and he even said because I wanted to buy a book that was a little bit heavy um he said look, I can keep it behind the counter for you and you can come back for it. 
which he did, which was really lovely of him. And he didn't even want me to pay for it up front. Because I said, look, I'll pay for it. And he was like, no, you can pay for it when you when you come back for it. Because there was only the one left. And so I had to get it because this was a favourite of mine. It's always been a favourite. It's the Wind in the Willows and it's a hardback um, illustrated edition. It's quite heavy. So that's why... I went back for it. Look at the back. I've always loved this. Even my mum, when I told her that I'd bought this, she was like, oh, you've always loved Wind in the Willows. I loved it when it was on TV as a kid. I've loved the books. And I couldn't not get this illustrated version. This is by... This is Welbeck Editions. Um... So you've got a bit here, there's Kenneth Graham. The riverbank, I mean, look, oh my God. I could live in this little world, you know, you've got the mole. Look, ratty. There we are on the river. I just, um, his toad in his car. <laughs> Badger with Toad. Um, I mean, look, it's even got a bookmark, ribbon bookmark. But I couldn't leave it there when I saw it. Um, I, you know, I said to Richard, oh, my God, they've only got one. I've got to, like, have it. And my brother had given me some money for my birthday so I bought it with that so really happy with my wind in the willows so that was from there then oh my gosh because we went to so many places like Battle Abbey and we went into some smugglers caves that was scary very cool but scary because I'd of course be me being me had a ghostly experience in there of something coming up behind me and making like a <sighs> noise and then when Richard went back up there and was saying something like leave my friend alone or something but just before he started talking I heard <sighs> so yeah that was a bit <laughs> freaky but um yeah that was another cool thing and I'm probably not doing these in order guys but we went into another shop and this was new and Richard hadn't seen this shop before. And this is the name of the shop. Um, and she'd only been open since, I think she said last Samhain. And so in there, they had this. This is issue 20. So it's like a magazine, but I said to Richard, magazine, but it's like a book. I mean, look at that. It's it's not a magazine that you would read and throw away, or I wouldn't anyway. Um, and it, it wasn't cheap, um, but I just thought it was lovely and it's something that I would keep like a book. So I didn't mind. It was £12, um, but it's, it's very thick. So it was just called Witches and she just had it on the counter. But you can see the like thickness of it. And this is spring 2024. So probably they have maybe four a year, spring, summer, autumn and winter. So, um, yeah. So there was that. Um, in the same shop... They had lots of um, different bags, but this one caught my eye. Eye, eye. <laughs> um, it's so cool. And I mean, Richard said, what are you going to put in it? And I was like, oh, I'll think about that later. <laughs> um, because I could put a larger deck into this. I don't want to just use it as a pencil case or that, because it's like, sort of like velvety. Um, it says all seeing eye. Well, it says makeup bag, but 
I'm not going to use it for that. Um, I will put a deck. Or I could even put a couple of decks in here because I just thought it was cool. I mean, can you imagine using this as a makeup bag? It would totally ruin it. Um, so I'm not going to be using it for that. But I really liked it. So I bought that from the same shop. And the last thing that I bought from that particular shop was this, the Wild Alchemy Lab and Astro Botanical Remedy Deck. Now, it, it wasn't sealed, but the cards inside are sealed. So I wasn't too worried about it, because as you can see, they've still got the band across. And I will do a walkthrough of this. But I thought it was different, you know. Um... It's got like this booklet with it. So we've got like astrological correspondences and look at this in the middle. So, but I will do a proper walkthrough of this. Um, yeah, call on the wisdom of nature, discover 52 wild plants and through the ancient practices of alchemy, astrology and wild crafting, allow them to support and strengthen your mind, body and soul. So I really liked it because I thought it was different. It was published in 2023 by Orion Publishing Group. So, yeah, I I got that in there as well. As I said, I will do a full walkthrough of that. Then when we went to Battle Abbey, so it's owned by English Heritage, um, I did buy something in the shop. I didn't think I was going to actually, but then I saw this and at the time they had 20% off um, for English Heritage members which I'm not but Richard is and he he um he actually borrowed his sister's card so that I could go in sort of free of charge on on her card which was lovely and of course it was 20% off in the gift shop and the cafe so I saw this and I love things with bees on it <laughs> So, and again, this is not showing it as the proper colour. It looks more blue on camera, but it's more of a greeny colour. It's by Elizabeth Scarlet London. So this is obviously her. So it's a coin purse. So I might use it for that, or I might use it for something else but I just really liked it um it's got that velvety texture and I love the bees and they're all like embroidered on there um so it was quite a good price with like the 20% off as well so yeah really nice it's still got the stuffing in it but it's got like Elizabeth Scarlet and that inside and I mean, you could, if you wanted, I guess, put like a small deck in here, you know, like a mini deck, if if I decided to. But I might use it as an actual, as an actual purse. But we'll see. But yeah, I really liked it with the bees on it. It's like I've got, to, I've got to get that. So there was that. And that just looks really terrible, doesn't it? And. We just said I wouldn't probably wouldn't need much money. <laughs> oh dear. Then on the last day, when um, Richard and his partner, uh, his husband Peter, were um, bringing me home, we went to Eltham in London. And we visited Eltham Palace, which was lovely. Um, it's originally a Tudor uh, mansion house. But um, a millionaire couple took it on in the 1920s, so it's all kind of 1920s art deco and stuff inside. And it was really interesting and lovely to see it. I really enjoyed it. But while we were at Eltham, there's a shop called Wicker Moon um, that Richard had already been to. And he, um, I think he did show what he'd got from there. Um 
and it sounded so cool and I said oh I'd love to go there but it was difficult it's a little bit more difficult to get to by train so he said well we can go on the way you know bringing you you home so we did that so in there I got oh my god and there's a story behind this guy So this, of course, is Kanunos. And I saw him, like, sitting behind some other things on a shelf. And he does need a bit of cleaning, which is fine, because I will do that. Um, I just loved the way he was dressed. And, you know, his horns are intact as well. And often these get broken, because I've got a Kanunos with broken um, horns. But I just thought he was so cool and the way he was dressed. And I looked at him and walked away. And then I walked back again. And it was just like he was sat there and like um, I was meant to have him. So. And the lady that owns the shop. I'll just put him like that because then you can see him a bit better. Um, said that he was from her own collection because she's been putting things in the shop from her own collection that she no longer uses. Um, and she said, and this was just like amazing, <laughs> she said, not only was he from her own collection, she said to me, do you remember um, a shop in Glastonbury called the Cat and Cauldron? I said, yes, and it's not there anymore. And she was explaining how the man who owned it, <clears throat> along with his wife, um, you know, hadn't been well and had had a stroke, I think she said. And they don't have the shop in Glastonbury anymore, but it was a traditional witchcraft shop. And this Kanunos came from there. I said to Richard, I said, I don't believe it. That Kanunos that I've looked at and would really like has come from Glastonbury my favourite place ever and he's come originally from a shop in Glastonbury I mean seriously what are the chances of that I couldn't believe it so of course I had to have him um so I got him for you know quite a good price really but like I say he does need a little bit of um cleaning but that's fine I can do that so I got him and then I was going to walk out of the shop and I'd looked at this a couple of times and thought, hmm, don't know. Um, I picked it up, put it back and I was going to walk out of the shop and I looked back at it and it was just like, almost as if it was saying, no, don't leave me here. <laughs> I know that sounds mad. But look at this. It had already been wire wrapped because somebody had wanted it to wear as jewellery and then didn't. So they put the item in the shop. And I mean, look at it. It's a um, generator quartz. I thought it was lovely really nice i mean i don't know if i'm going to keep it in the wire or whether i will take it out i haven't decided yet but it just feels so good um or whether i will hang it or i could use it as a pendulum um like i said i haven't decided yet but that was lovely and um and she charged me £25 for that, and I thought that was good. I thought it was going to be a lot more, because a crystal of that size, I mean, nowadays, crystals are expensive. So I thought it was a really good buy. And like I say, these two items I bought with my um, birthday money from my mum anyway. So, and they wrapped everything really well. I mean, he was wrapped really well I've just taken him obviously out of the wrapping and the two ladies in there are really lovely really nice helpful chatty um and she also gave me some free incense like their own incense so she gave me two red goddess incense 
and then a gold sandal incense which is really nice of her to give that for free you know so yeah so that was all of the items which I I got when I was with Richard apart from and I'll just quickly quickly show you these um I probably won't do walkthroughs but Richard and I exchanged some decks so he had a box of decks that he didn't he didn't want anymore that he was wanting to get rid of so I picked up the crystal visions from him which I um, kept meaning to get and never have. And so now I've got that. Um, this one, which is called the Winged Spirit Tarot. And I thought this one, when I looked at the cards, would go really well with my Londa Tarot, my out-of-print Londa Tarot. I've got that. Also, unbelievably, the Forager's Daughter Tarot. And I said to Richard, I can't just take that. I can't. So Richard had a deck from me anyway that I took with me. Um, and I said to him, well, I've got a couple of indie decks on eBay. And I showed him what I'd got. And I said, if you want any of these, I'll send them to you um, for the Forager's Daughter or... I will buy you a indie deck. So he chose two decks, but if he doesn't get on with them or he doesn't like them, I will still <laughs> get him something because I just feel like really bad. Um, and then this one, which I'd never seen before, but the cards are very cool. This is the Arcania, whatever, Lemon Plain something like that 80 card tarot deck and guide book with original soundtrack um this was a kickstarter deck so that's what it looks like on the back so i might do walkthroughs if you want me to so let me know in the comments if you want me to do walkthroughs of these but richie and i are going to be doing a um live about our deck swaps about why we um, decided to let go of the ones that we let go of and how we're getting on or how we think we're going to use the decks we've received from each other. So that will be quite nice. So that's alive on the um, 26th of this month of April. So, yeah, at 7 o'clock. So that will be um, really nice, I think, too, and to see how... How Richard's doing with the decks that I've sent him because two of them will probably have only arrived today or possibly tomorrow so yeah but as I said to him if they don't work for you I will get you something else because these two are indie decks and I I'm just one of these people I can't take things without giving in return you know something of sort of equal value or equal-ish, you know, equal thing to it. So if he doesn't get on with those, then I will get, ask him what indie decks he's looking at and get him something for the for these two particularly. So, yeah. So that was it, guys. That's everything that I got <laughs> when I was with Richard. You should see the mess here now with all this paper and things and the cats are starting to think about getting into it. So it's time for me to probably uh, try and pack this up away from them. Um, so, yeah, and um, I hope everyone's doing really well. And hopefully I might see you on Rich's channel on the 26th, Long Man Tarot, for the live. And, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.